everyone, welcome to Tim Fincher. Today we're gonna talk about hooking up your tow vehicle to your travel trailer. We are working with a 19-foot Airstream International Signature. We have the Blue Ox hitch right here. So the first thing you want to do after you have your hitch connected to your truck is you're going to back it up and line it up with the coupler right here. You want the ball slightly towards the front of the coupler. You don't want it too far back or it doesn't lock in properly. So once you have it lined up, you'll kind of see here it's near the front. You need to lift this up so it locks into place when you have the ball in there. So you're going to press forward and lift up. The next thing you're gonna do is we have an electric, so it's really easy. You're going to lower the tongue jack down onto the ball. Now to lower the tongue jack, you have a RET, which is for retract, and you have EXT for extend. You're gonna hit retract to lower the tongue jack. Now, if you noticed as I was lowering, even as the ball got into the coupler lock, I still pressed it, continue pressing it down because you want to make sure the weight is on the truck at this point in time. And once you see that truck go down a little bit, then you can lock this into place. And you just push it like this. Now that the ball is locked into place, you're going to bring the ton jack back up so we can hook our anti-sway bars. Now the reason you extend this back up is because it releases some of the tension when you go to hook in your anti-sway bars. Otherwise, it's extremely difficult to get them set in. So what we'll do is now we're gonna hook up the anti-sway bars. Before I hook up the sway bar, since I have a clear shot to the truck, we're gonna hook up the chains and the emergency breakaway cable. Okay, now that's all hooked up. We can start the first sway bar. All right, to install the first sway bar, you need to make sure this hole is pointing up because this hole has a lock right here. So when you slide it in, you're gonna see the lock bounce up and then it's gonna lock into place and you'll hear it. I always do an extra little tug to make sure that it is locked in place. Once from there, you're gonna put the chain into this. We pre-marked our chain so it's easy and fast for hookups so we know where to automatically put the chain at. So first thing you wanna do is you're gonna pull this little lever rotate this back. You're gonna take this chain, and what I do, the tape is usually right above. You can see there's a slot in here that you'll be able to set the chain into. Now with holding onto this, you're gonna take this little tool and you're gonna start cranking this. So we'll see if I have the tongue jack up high enough. If I don't, this is gonna be really hard and I'm gonna have to lift it up. I guess it was good. So you'll see, you'll know this is locked into place. The blue ox will be facing down, easy to read. This pin is locked in, and now your first sway bar is secure. Now we have to go to the other side and repeat. Okay, so we just finished hooking up the sway bar on the driver's side, and now we're gonna do the passenger side. The reason I'm making that distinction is because the chain does not go in the same direction on both sides. When we installed it on the driver's side, the chain actually came from the back forward and now on the passenger side the chain's going to go from the forward to the back so you'll notice when i move this it goes forward this time and we'll bring the chain up this way so i'm going to go ahead and hook it up and you're going to do the same thing as you've done the other side you want to make sure the hole is facing up so it goes into the fitting over here as the other side do the extra tug to make sure it's locked into place when it is that little fitting in there it's gonna fit like this. So the link is gonna be facing on the thinner side so it locks in there. You wanna make sure the chain isn't twisted. Cause if it's twisted, you'll notice it gets shortened up. It's not gonna be in the correct position that it needs to be. So we're gonna make sure it's straight. Let's bring this up. Always watch your fingers. This can snap at you really easily. Put that in there. Take the tool. Crank it forward. Once again, you'll know it's locked into place when you hear this little pin right here snap in. 
and the blue ox will be facing down again. Easy to read and that's how you know it's in place. All right, now all sway bars are connected, chains are connected. We'll only a few more steps. Basically, we're gonna lower the tongue jack down, bring this foot back up. But before we do it, I always want to install this little pin lock right here. It's an extra added security of protection. I've never seen this get knocked up, but I would hate if it did and your trailer gets disconnected while driving. So we have this fancy new twist one. So let me go ahead and install this. So now this is locked in and secure and no one can just disconnect your trailer. All right, so what is next? Next, we are now going to lower this tongue jack right here and we're gonna hit that retract again. Just real fast, what you're looking for is this foot's gonna start raising. It takes a little bit of time for it to start raising up, but eventually when it reaches its full position, this will flip up and you'll see it. You'll see the ring just hit it. I just don't want to over crank it. And you'll see now with the sway bars, you'll see a nice curve in here that applies the tension that will help you from swaying on the freeway. Okay, so now that the foot is all the way up, we're almost ready to go. First, you want to double check your entire setup. Make sure your chains are connected. Make sure that emergency breakaway cable is um, connected. You want to look at the sway bars. There'll be this nice curve in here. You'll notice they're pretty tight. Okay, so now I'm gonna connect the seven-way connector cable to the truck. You'll notice that there is this nub here and you wanna look inside of your seven-way pin to see where this is at because you want this lined up with there so it stays in place. On our RAM, it happens to be up, so I'm gonna plug this in. All right, when you push this in, you just wanna make sure it's all the way in there. If not, you may notice that some of your lights don't work, your blinkers. So I would always suggest before taking off and driving, turn your vehicle on and then test your turn signals, your emergency lights, your brake lights, have someone go to the back of the trailer and make sure they're all working. Now that you're ready to go and the trailer's connected to the truck, you always wanna do one last walkthrough around the trailer and inside the trailer. First, inside the trailer, you always wanna make sure all the doors, drawers, everything is secure and nothing's flying around in there because you gotta remember this trailer is basically an earthquake on wheels. Once you make sure everything's secure on the inside, the fans are down, everything's locked, you wanna go to the outside. Make sure that the chocks are removed from the tires and also make sure that the step is up and lifted and out of the way. All right, thanks for joining us today and watching on how to connect your trailer to your rig. If you have any questions about any of the products we used, feel free to visit our website at 10venture.com. We're also on Instagram at 10venture. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.